and so hello and welcome. My name's Kevin and I'm the minister of Poundsgate Methodist Church and this is our service for Christmas, our carol service for Poundsgate up here on Dartmoor in Devon. Warm welcome to you wherever you're from and uh, unfortunately we can't have a service in person this year because of Covid and so we're bringing you service by the wonders of technology and YouTube. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so we sing or listen to our opening carol played here on this chapel organ by Geert, our organist, Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Let us pray. Lord, we praise you for your transforming presence in our lives. We thank you that you are full of compassion and mercy. O oh Lord, our rescuer, we come to you with our disappointments and scars, with our weaknesses and struggles. We come knowing that you are the God of great reversals. Captives are freed, the blind see, the deaf hear, those bowed down will be lifted up. Make your presence known to us, O great Deliverer, and may we rejoice in your promises to us today. And Lord, we are sorry for the times when we shut our eyes to your goodness, when we close our hearts to the joy that you offer. We're so busy doing our own thing, trying to work in our own strength. We are sorry when we ignore those who are struggling with sadness we cannot comprehend. Those from whom colours have become grey. Those who need to hear about your love for them. Give us courage and renewed strength to share hope and joy with others and to witness to your unfailing love. In the name of Jesus, our Saviour and King. Amen.
One of the highlights of my Christmas is attending with other members of my family the annual carol service at Poundsgate Chapel. It is obviously understandable why the decision not to hold the service this year has been made, but it is also very disappointing that for a second year we cannot have the magical experience which is their carol service. A few days ago I was contacted by Kevin who asked me to record my memories of the chapel why it's special to me and to introduce my choice of carol. I am delighted to do this for the recorded carol service he is compiling. My links with the chapel are lifelong and my family's links with the chapel go back a very long way. My grandparents, Alfred Timms and Eleanor French, were married in the chapel in 1926 and my uncle John and then my mum, Pearl, were baptised there. My nan, Eleanor, was part of the Dartmoor Corner family and my granddad came to the area for work. My uncle was born at Uppercott and my mum in a cottage at Lower Town. The family moved to Dorset when mum was a baby. They returned to Devon at the start of World War II, but to the Oakhampton and not the Poundsgate part of the moor. But Poundsgate Chapel always had a special place in their hearts. From 1961 to 1966, my dad, Brian Allen, was the Methodist minister in Totnes, which was at that time part of the Buckfast Lee circuit, as was Poundsgate. My dad did not have pastoral charge of the chapel, but often preached there, and we often went with him on a Sunday afternoon. It was always a special experience, and mum felt that she was coming home. It has been a real pleasure to re-engage with the chapel in the last few years and one benefit of lockdown has been the ability to join some of the monthly services on Zoom from my home in Somerset. It is so pleasing that the chapel continues to be a Christian witness and a Methodist presence on the moor. The carol I have chosen is O Come All Ye Faithful and it's been my favourite since I was five. I sang it for the first time at a service on Christmas morning at the Methodist Chapel at Bridistow in the old Oakhampton circuit, which I attended with my dad. I thought it was wonderful and have loved it ever since. Singing it brings back lovely memories.
in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks be to God. Amen.
and as I was driving up on the moor to film this service, I discovered that St Raphael's Church at Huckabee has also cancelled their in-person carol service because of coronavirus. So I thought I would show a couple of shots inside St Raphael's just to honour their church since it's one of our neighbouring churches up here on Dartmoor. And so of course once again at Christmas time we hear and we celebrate the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. A story that is distant from us in time and in place and I guess in culture and yet a story also I think that is very familiar to us because Mary and Joseph experience the same anxieties and joys of pregnancy and childbirth that are experienced by all parents in all generations I guess. They have the added complication of being away from home because of the census but they are at one with us in our humanity. And of course it's a real disappointment to us that once again this year we cannot have uh, an in-person service to celebrate this story at our chapel at Poundsgate because of the pandemic. This is the second year running of course. There's nothing quite like being face to face, being in person with one another, enjoying a chat, a smile, a friendship. And maybe that's part of course of the story of Christmas itself. Because God doesn't remain distant from us. God doesn't shout at us from a megaphone. God comes and is one with us, sharing our humanity, walking this earth, revealing his love in a human life. So maybe that's one of the things that we should remember from this story and this service. That the heart of Christmas is God revealing his nature, that he loves us personally and deeply and is one with us. In another way, I suppose, the fact that we have to do this remotely tells a different part of the Christmas story because the wise men travel from afar to meet the Christ child. They represent the whole of the Gentile world, the whole of the rest of the world outside of Palestine coming to be a part of the story of Christ. And the fact that we're doing this not in person in a chapel, but out on the airwaves and the wonders of, of, of YouTube and the internet mean that people can join us from all sorts of different places, that something of the story of Jesus is made public and is broadcast because the other part of the Christmas story is that it is good news for all the world. And so we'll say farewell to St Raphael's at Huckabee and find our way back to Poundsgate Methodist Church. But first of all, we sing our next carol. Thank mm -hmm. you. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east 
and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And so we come to our time of prayer. And rather than me just saying a prayer, I wonder whether, since you're watching it on YouTube, you may wish to just pause it for a moment and have a time for your own prayers. Because I wonder who you'd like to remember in your prayers this, this Christmas time. There will be people known to you personally who you'll want to stop and remember. But we remember how Mary and Joseph were away from home in the first Christmas, forced to leave home because of the political decisions of others. And so maybe we should remember those who are away from home this Christmas time, those who are refugees, those who have to flee. And then, of course, there are the shepherds at Christmas time, those working hard, long, and sociable hours to provide food and well being for others. Maybe we'd wish to remember those who carry heavy burdens and who work long and difficult hours for our society. And then we have the wise men, people who have travelled from afar, part of the world church, part of the wider humanity. Maybe we'll wish to remember different parts of the world in our prayers at this time. So maybe you'd just like to spend a few moments of quiet, reflect and bring yourselves and others before the Christ child right now. And now let us join all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so thank you for joining us for our carol service up here at Poundsgate on Dartmoor. It just remains for me to wish you a very happy Christmas on behalf of everybody at the chapel and to express my thanks for all those people who have taken part in our service. God bless you and a peaceful Christmas and a happy new year.
and so the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit remain with us and with all those we carry in our hearts this day, tomorrow and forevermore. Amen.